Today I'll be showing you how to build a 3D product configurator on the 3Kit platform. So I'll start with a brand new demo environment. We'll import some static 3D files. I'll show you how we make those assets configurable. And then finally, we'll tie everything back into a product definition. So here we are logged into 3Kit. Uh, this is a brand new demo environment. You can see we have nothing yet in our uh, asset library and we have no items in our catalog. So the very first step is for us to import some 3D files. So let me go ahead and come over to my desktop and I'm simply gonna drag these 3D files from my desktop into the 3Kit platform. So for today, what we'll be doing is building a 3D product configurator for a chair. So the first file that I'm gonna import right here is the fully assembled chair. I'm then going to import two separate files for uh, different headrests that can be uh, added as accessories to the chair. And then last but not least, a material that we'll be able to apply to the seat. Let's give it a quick refresh. So 3Kit went ahead and created a whole bunch of asset records in our library from those 3D files. You'll see here we have the task chair, but we not only have the actual model itself, which represents the geometry of the chair, but we also have a variety of materials as well as textures that were included in the 3D file of that chair model. So essentially what, what's happening here in the background is 3Kit separates out all of the elements inside of the 3D files that we import and componentizes them. This makes it easy for us to either reuse things like materials or swap out different materials in our library when we're building our product configurator. So for example, we have this mint colored fabric and as you'll see here in a second, that mint colored fabric was applied to the seat of the chair that we imported. Now just to kind of show you everything else that we have, I've got my fabric that I imported separately, this peach colored material, and I also have these two headrests, the skinny headrest and the executive headrest. Uh, as separate models. So let's go ahead and begin to stage and tag uh, this chass chair to make it configurable. So here's a quick preview of the chair that we imported. This is the original 3D file of the task chair. You can see it's fully assembled. Now on the left hand side we have our scene graph and you can simply click on any of the nodes here to, to get a quick uh, preview of what the properties look like. We can also edit any of the properties over here on the right. Now I'll do a deep dive on the scene, uh, on the editor itself in a, in a future video, but just for the sake of time, let me scroll down here and uh, take a look at this material. So inside of the original file that we imported, uh, there was a material already applied to the seat. So in this case, we have the mint colored fabric assigned to the seat of the chair. Now, if I wanted to change this, I can go ahead and let's say change it to that peach colored fabric. I just simply have to open up this drop down, select the, the material that I want, and we'll automatically apply it. So the first step in making this chair configurable is to set up an anchor point for the headrest. Now to do that, I'm gonna open up my asset drawer right here at the bottom, go ahead and choose our models, and I'm gonna select the executive headrest to be our placeholder anchor. Okay, so essentially what we're doing here by creating this anchor is setting up a point inside of this model where we can swap in or out any 3D uh, asset that's in our library. So again, we have a few different headrests that we're going to be able to uh, choose from, the skinny headrest or the executive headrest, and so wherever we place this anchor, uh, that will be the point that that model is applied. So let me just change this name to, the, to anchor just to make sure it's nice and clear. And now I'll go ahead and drag uh, this, oops, I'll go ahead and I'll drag, <laughs> uh, that's not how you spell anchor, there we go. I'll go ahead and I'll drag this up, drag it back, drag it a little bit down and just kind of place it where we think this headrest should go, right? And there we go. So essentially now I have my chair and I have a headrest anchored here at the very top. 
So this is gonna be the point where any of our uh, headrests are gonna go. Now that I have that set up, we can go ahead and begin to create our logic for this particular chair. So I'm gonna open up my logic editor and I'm gonna add a few attributes. So I'll add one attribute for the headrest. <coughs> I'll choose the type model and I'll set my default as the executive headrest. And I'll create another attribute for the material upholstery and I'll set that default to the mint colored fabric. So now I have my attributes created, I'm gonna go ahead and tell 3Kit what we wanna do with those attribute values. So I'll simply change the name of this rule to set material, oops, set mat and models, and I'll add a few actions. So the first action that I'm gonna add is an action to set the headrest anchor to whatever the value of the attribute headrest is. So once I have that set up, you can see I can change uh, the headrest to any of the uh, uh, models that are in our asset library. And secondly, I'm going to set up another action here to go ahead and change the material on the seat to whatever the value of the upholstery attribute is. So here we can choose our mint colored fabric, or we can choose that fabric colored peach, or that uh, uh, peach colored fabric, excuse me, and you can see it's going to update that for us automatically. So now we have our task chair, we have the headrest anchored, and we have uh, the material on the seat. Uh, we've made that configurable. So the final step here in our session today is to set up the uh, catalog items to make this product uh, truly configurable. So I'm going to go ahead and create a few different items here. We'll start with the, uh, I'll say, skinny headrest, and I'll go ahead and I'll assign the skinny headrest as the 3D asset right there. And I'll add a tag. Uh, let's just call this headrest to keep it simple. And I'm gonna do the same thing again for the, uh, uh, for the executive headrest. And then I'm going to do the same thing for our mint fabric. And we'll simply name this, uh, let's see here, fabrics. Create a quick tag. We'll create another item in our catalog for the peach fabric. And then finally, I'm going to create a catalog item for our task chair. And I'll assign the 3D asset to that chair. But in this case, since this is the, the product that we're going to be, um, that the user will be configuring, we're going to add a few additional items down here at the bottom. So under our attribute section, I'm going to define what attributes we want the user to see. So in this case here, I'll choose our part reference attribute. And we'll say this is the headrest. And now I'm going to define what models or what items in our library or excuse me, in our catalog we want to be available as an option as the headrest. Now I could either choose these individually like this, choose the executive headrest and the skinny headrest, or I can simply choose this tag so that any of the items in our catalog that have this tag will become an option for the headrest uh, uh, attribute. Now I'll go ahead and I'll create a second attribute here. I'll call this one upholstery and I'll assign the tag fabric so any of the items in our catalog that have the tag fabric will become an option. Now we'll save that. Let's reopen that and we're done. So here I have my task chair. I can choose from any of the headrests in our asset library. I can choose from any of the upholsteries that we have in our catalog. And now this is ready to be embedded into a website or an e-commerce platform, a coding tool, or you know, really wherever we want this visual configurator to live. So great, so uh, just to recap, we started by importing a few raw 3D files. I then uh, uh, set up an anchor for the headrest. 
we then added a few rules to define how this chair should change when we update our attribute values. And then finally, we created a couple of catalog items.